Hello, hello, hello. This is Tom from Tom and Ruth Philippine Adventures. You know, it's been a while since I've talked about this, but I'm going to talk about this. And it's actually something that I got to thinking about today. Uh, even though us expats, we come here to the Philippines, and we sometimes uh, expect things to be a certain way. And what we do is we uh, we make mistakes. And so we're, today we're going to talk a little bit about mistakes that we make coming here in the Philippines and our actions and what we do. I haven't made notes, so I wouldn't forget it. I was set to think about this today. Stay tuned. Here are some mistakes that we expats coming to the Philippines will make and decisions sometimes by coming here, moving here, we sometimes have these this particular attitude, and you know I'm at fault at this also. I'm not speaking to the court. I'm, this this is coming from me too, and these are actually a lot of these are my mistakes. Uh, number one on the list, I'm just going to go down the list here: craving food and want more things. I come here to the Philippines. I'm craving particular food. Maybe I want more things. I'm always complaining about. I want this and I want that. And I can't get tomatoes. I can't get that. And I find myself, what was it, this last week saying, I need to stop doing that. I need, I, I'm need. i getting into maybe a rat race of doing that. So I'm going to try my best to stop complaining about what they don't have and what they do have here. Because you, you will do that and you just drive you crazy. So if they don't have a ticker food, okay, they don't have it. So find a place that does have it if you're not happy, right? Um bringing Western relationship and bringing it here to the Philippines. Bringing your Western relationship to the Philippines. What I mean by that is this. You come into the Philippines and these girls are different. They're completely different than Western girls. Uh, you're in a country where men are men, women are women. Men here are had a household. Women here cater to the men because men are here, uh, had a household. Now, that's so much different than the U.S. In U.S., uh, it's kind of like the opposite. Women want to be the leader of the household. Well, here, men are the leaders of the household. And that's the reason a lot of expats want to do that. Not only that, you bring the Western world attitude with you. Well, when I was with my ex, I did this. Well, when I was here, I did this. And when I had a problem, I did this. And I have to catch myself sometimes thinking a thought, and think it before I say it. Because if I think it, and I'm going to say it, I need to think my thought process out better. And we sometimes don't do that. We don't think about that. We think about, well, okay, this is what we did in U.S. I need to do that here. Well, no, it's a different culture, completely different atmosphere. The people are completely different. And the women are different. And the men are different. And the culture is different. Here's one that you you have to you have to say is I have to read my writing. We sometimes will find ourselves doing this, and if you guys uh, are like me, you do this often. We sometimes what we'll do too is we judge the locals, and judging the locals meaning that uh, we judge them on what they do and how they act and what they're doing, how they're doing things, why they're doing things that way, and sometimes we should look at that and say, well. That's the thing they've been doing a long time. Their culture is that way. And judging the locals sometimes, and what I mean by that is, uh, we sometimes will say something that maybe we shouldn't say. For example, uh, maybe nonchalantly, maybe quietly to our wife or girlfriend or, or maybe someone's there with us. Well, I don't understand why they do it that way. You know, I really don't understand the culture here. You know, it's just really dirty on this street. Well, the Filipinos know it's dirty. The Filipinos know that it's not clean. They do the best that they can. They know that they may not have the best bridges and the best roads. They know what's going on. And so when an uh, expat comes and he mentions that, it's kind of like rubbing in their face. And so you have to be very careful with that. If Even if you're saying it as a joke or whatever, well, our market had better oranges in the U.S. or we could find more oranges. They know they don't have oranges. They already know they don't have that stuff. They already know that that's the way it is, and they're doing the best they can. And sometimes 
as expats and as foreigners coming into the Philippines, we need to look at that and kind of get a feel of maybe more so their feelings. They understand that's all they can get. It's sort of like they don't know what it's like. Some have never been out of the country, so they don't know what it's about. So we sometimes need to sit down and really think about that. Another thing we think about is the vices we bring here from U.S. and other countries throughout the world. We bring our vices with us, and we actually have vices. What do you mean by that? Drinking, alcohol, uh, gambling, drugs. <clears throat> you know, in U.S., you buy a glass of beer, to, yeah, depending. A pitcher of beer runs going to run you a glass of beer at 3 4 $5 a beer. Uh, you can come get a beer here, draft beer for a dollar, sometimes less, depending on where you go. You can actually buy a can cheaper than you can in the U.S. You can buy a quart. You can buy a liter cheaper than you can in a lot of other places. What happens if you actually can get that cheaper, you end up drinking more. So you're there at 7, I mean not 7 more, but say you're having lunch there at 1 in the afternoon, and you may end up, normally in the U.S., you would stop at a certain time and go home. Well, here you may end up drinking until you know, seven, eight, nine, because you have the money and it's readily available and it just goes on and on. And before you know it, hey, it's okay. I only spent 20 bucks. Well, 20 bucks every day. And you may find yourself, you're, all you're doing is hurting yourself, killing yourself. So if you like gambling and like drinking and doing drugs, well, if you have that vice when you came here, it may expand on that vice. And that's not a good thing. We don't sometimes think about this. They don't, we don't really realize this and this is a fault of mine uh i don't tr expats don't track their money they don't have any idea what they have how much money they have they don't track what's going on because 50 pesos to the dollar they don't realize that the money that they have it's got to last them whatever time frame maybe you come here rich maybe you come here five six seven grand a month and you need to spend it because you don't have anybody to give that money to but maybe you could think something else about giving the money maybe to someone else and the charities down the road or someone uh, but I know that when you come here and you're not tracking it, and then you get in trouble, like a lot of expats do, uh, you get in trouble that really easily by spending your money and you don't have enough money to do anything else. So say, for instance, you came here with X amount of dollars and you plan on saving that for quite a few years. And three years later, four years later, you found you just ran through all that money. It's gone. Can't be replaced because you can't find a job. You're on limited budget. So how do you find the money? We sometimes don't really think about that in detail. And it can be quite frustrating. So your money is, is tracked uh, up to a certain extent, right? As long as you pay your rent, your electricity, and your food, and if you have a vice or not, if you don't. Uh, but still, you still have should track, keep up with your money. Keep up where it's going. Keep up on how it's doing it. I honestly, I let that go. Uh, I, I let Ruth buy what she wanted to buy when she wanted to buy it. It was actually a no-no because we probably overspent a lot of money. There's a lot of stuff that we have here in these houses and things that we don't need. We don't even use them. I mean, there's there's a couple of pots over there she don't use. And she probably paid, you know, $70, 80 $100 each for these particular pots that she bought. Nothing against anything that she did. I'm just saying we all need to track what we're doing. And I was bad about that in the U.S. too, not tracking. You know, go put the debit card in, fill up fuel, go get something to eat, come out, and not track it, you know, and find myself. How did I spend all that money? Well, you realize you're spending it every day. Um, and they, they'll track it. And one other thing that we don't normally do here in the Philippines and was coming to the Philippines, we really don't bring any good quality clothes with us when we come. We don't bring any shoes. We don't bring any good quality underwear. We don't bring any good quality clothes with us. When you're coming here, bring what you need. If you can't get it, find a source that can ship it to you. You're going to find yourself a lot easier and life's going to be a lot easier on you. There's nothing in the world that's any worse than that and not finding any clothes. I found myself in that situation. And uh, luckily, uh, we found a couple sources I can actually have them made. But then again, too, you, can, uh, you can't have you can't have t-shirts made. Uh, you can't wear dress clothes every day. You know, so you have to find yourself in that happy medium. And you go to, okay, okay, well, they don't have my size. They don't have my shoes. They don't have my feet size. Uh, some of the, us big Americans, and there's... I'm small compared to a lot of Americans. They have to have theirs made or shipped in. And luckily they have family, but some don't have family outside United, uh, outside of this country and they have to just spend where they are. So, you know, 
we also also another thing I want to talk about here is we often get bored. Many, many, many Americans and foreigners get bored. Here is the reason why. And it's taken me a while to kind of the nail go in here and the light bulb went off the top of my head. It's where you live. It all boils down to where you live. As you know, living in the United States, you can live in a small community out in the country and things are going to be boring for you. But you get in the city, things are going to be fast paced. You're going to have something to do. You're going to have some places to go. You can go to theaters. You can go to uh, the baseball parks. You can go watch them play football. There's many things that you can do there in the U.S. Well, they don't have that here. But the closer to the city you are, there's more activities. There's more functions. There's something always going on. You can go. Maybe you can go to a play. Maybe they, they do have plays in some of the bigger cities. They do have plays and festivals that keep you busy. But out in the province, you're going to get so bored. You really are. There's only so much you can do. There's so many places you can walk down that same sorry, sorry store, get the same things you get every day, and do that every day. You're going to get bored. And that's something that living out in the province uh, is boredom. And I know that. That's the reason I bought the car. And keeps them busy but I've gone in the car so many times to the places now in the last six seven months I'm bored again I already went to all those places numerous times you know like you know I go to town and see Ollie you know four or five times a week uh, okay that's gotten old after a few months and so that and going to mountains and going up in the mountains and going over here and going over there going up in this really nice restaurant in the mountain and come to find out it's really what nice and I didn't do a video on it because it's not needed to do a video on it. You understand? So that happens quite a bit too. Um, so, and you know, something else too that you got to really uh, realize too is when you're coming to the Philippines and you're going to marry a Filipina, you're going to get married and you're going to need to, and maybe you didn't find a Filipina. Maybe you're looking for a Filipina and maybe she's out there and you, you kind of know who she is. You're going to have to court her. You're going to have to date her. You're going to have to go the old fashioned way. You're going to have to go to the house and introduce yourself to mama and papa and court the girl. And courting means date. Open the car door, things like that. Date her. Uh, some girls would just say, you don't need to court me. I'm yours no matter what. Some girls say, I'm not doing anything till you court me. And it's just the way they're raised. And there are guys that are 60 years old courting a 25-year-old girl and going to the old ways of, of doing things. And yes, they're doing it. And they're doing it the way there's, that the girl wants it to be done. And abstinence also. The girl's not, not uh, doing the thing. They're abstinence, you know. <clears throat> so they're not communicating in that manner. They're separate and they're not going to do it until. So that happens. Don't think that it don't. It does. There are some girls that are raised that way and are religious in that way. They won't do it, you know. So you have to kind of remember, you're not in a Western world anymore where you go on a date and within an hour, you're wherever, somewhere else, right? Here, it doesn't work that way a lot of times. Now, not saying it can't. Of course you can. There's going to be some to say, hey, man, no worries. I'm yours no matter what. And so be prepared for that. Um, and like I said, men are men here. Women are women. And what I mean by that, man is in charge of the household. No matter what, he's in charge of the household. All decisions will be made through you, and the wife will come to you and says, you make the decision. Do I do this? Can I go? Can I go over here? Can I do this? Can I take uh, my daughter with me? Can I take my son? Can we go? And they will ask you that. From day one, Ruth has done that. Still does it to this day. Daddy, I'm going to town. Is it okay if I go to town this afternoon? It's just the way it is. And she, uh, honey, I, I tell her, you don't have to ask me to go to town. Yeah, all you got to do is let me know. I'm going to town. But she says, no, no, why, why not ask you? If a child comes here or a family comes here, they'll ask, may we, may we leave now? We, uh, we, out of respect, they come and say, we will leave now and give me respect. And respect, you know, they bless and things like that. Blessing to the forehead, you guys know this. And say, we will leave now. And so it's, it's really, uh, really great country. Sometimes we always... Uh, don't really realize we criticize the country and the pitfalls about the country and I said this earlier we, we don't need to do that uh, we don't we don't need to criticize the people or culture anything about it here because we don't we don't know 
We already know what they go through. They already know what they go through. It's not their fault. It's not the country's fault. It's not the country's fault they have no electricity. It's not the country's fault they have no internet. It's the people before them, the people in high influence areas, it's their fault. That neighbor across the street, it's not their fault they don't have internet. It's not the guy's fault in town that he's supplying the internet. It's not his fault that PLDT cut the lines uh, 300 miles away and you don't have service. And it's not their fault. So I find myself realizing this more and more as being here. And like I said, I've been, we're planning to leave here, but it's making me realize a little bit more that sometimes we need to step back and say, it's not that guy's fault. Internet's off right now. There's no internet. I'm doing the internet on my phone. And the guy in town says, I'm doing everything I can do. I'm jumping through hoops trying to get the internet back on. I loaded up Globe. Globe is down. PLDT's down. And so's Converge. He's got three companies he goes through. They're all three down. Everything's down. There's no, uh, in booking known where I'm at, there's no internet. And I mean, that goes from CDO all the way to Davo and all up Cotabato, Cebuanga. I mean, it's huge area. You know, you're talking hundreds and hundreds of miles radius. So uh, it kind of gives you an idea. So so we've got to watch up, watch out about that. And the last thing I wanted to say is we sometimes don't have a backup plan. And a backup plan is saying, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. If this doesn't work and I don't have a backup plan. A backup plan is saying, things don't work out here. I'm going back to the States, right? You better have a credit card. You better have some backup plan that you can get out of the country. Because, you know, like I always tell everybody, we're not in Kansas anymore. If there's always needs to be a backup plan. And Ruth and I even talked about this. She says, you know what? Um, even me, even us, Daddy, we don't have a backup plan for it. And I said, we do. We have a backup plan. I just never discussed it with you. But I do want to say this. We will start doing a better job on a backup plan. That's for sure. I want to thank everybody for always watching my videos and thanking everybody for spending their valuable time. I got Omer crying. I have no idea what he's crying about. If you want anybody to cry, I should cry, right? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Be happy. But uh, I want to thank everybody for always watching. God bless everybody and thank you so much.